Hi, this is Gardner Humphreys, and I'm the College and Career Specialist for Marshall High School. I'm going to show you how to read or interpret the admissions data from Naviance. So Naviance is our uh, Fairfax County and Marshall site and tool that we use to track a whole lot of college and career information, but it's where we keep the admissions data on Marshall graduates and what colleges they've gone to and also which colleges by college they were accepted to and where they weren't. So it's really the best source of information to try to figure out your chances of being accepted into any particular college because all college admissions is locally based. In other words, when they're looking at your application, they're wondering uh, how challenging a high school is Marshall compared to other high schools. How many A's do we give out? Uh, are they hard to get? How many students take really advanced classes? And so what they look at really what do your grades mean? So that's what I mean when I say all admissions is really local. So they're, they're trying to figure out what your grades or your GPA means in the context of your high school. So that's why you need high school specific information by college to really figure out what your chances of admissions are. So here's how you do it. So the first thing you have to do is to log in and all students and parents have a login. It's the same as your FCPS login or your SIS login. Um, and if you don't have the site, you can go right over to fcps.edu forward slash Naviance. Uh, you can also go to Schoology, and it's under the Apps button at the top of your Schoology homepage. But you can see here, fcps.edu forward slash Naviance. The student login button is the first one on the page. The parent login is right after that. So that as a parent, you might not know your login already if you haven't used it. Um, but you can try to find it out, or uh, if you can't log in, if you have trouble, there is a help feature down at this page to create your login, and if that doesn't work, you can also use it uh, with your student or use your student's login. But here's what you'll see when you log in. This is the Naviance homepage. So this will be personalized by student. So up here you'll see your own name instead of Marshall High School. This is a demonstration account, but you'll see your own name up here. And there's some information about you that is specific in here to you. Um, and this is also where you track your college applications eventually. But to find college admissions data, the first thing you do is to type the name of the college that you want to look at in the search bar up here. So say I'm looking for James Madison. I could either, sometimes an abbreviation will work, so I'll do JMU. Sometimes you have to spell it out exactly. And remember, Virginia is actually Virginia Polytechnic, if you're looking up that one. But let's go to James Madison and take a look. And you can see there, James Madison comes up. Click on the name. And here is the James Madison homepage. So what you see here is some general admissions information and information about cost and deadlines. And what you want to find out is not really the acceptance right here because that doesn't tell you very much. You want to open up the scatter grams. So right below the, the big blue acceptance percentage right here is this thing called check out scatter grams to see how this relates to you. So open that up, click on that or scroll down and click on admissions over here. And the first thing you see will be this graph. So these are all real Marshall seniors. And if you have a test score and the GPA, which pretty much everyone has a GPA, but you might not have test scores and that's fine. That's a whole separate question whether or not you need them. But if you do have them, it'll plot you on this graph. There's this, if you see this little blue person right here, a little blue circle, so that's me. So I have about a 3.5 and test scores of about oh 1240 or so maybe a little bit higher so what you want to do to be able to interpret these graphs is don't look for any one specific average so you can see this dotted line here and that's connecting uh, the average gpa with the average test score it's putting that on this graph but it doesn't really help to know a single average when you're looking at these colleges because these colleges accept a range of grades and a range of test scores if they care about test scores. So uh, one number like here, it will say for James Madison, the average is uh, 3.88. And then the SAT will say average is like a 1267. But that would be misleading because you might think, well, geez, I don't have a 3.88. Does that mean I'm not going to get in? But again, it's all about ranges, right? So... What you want to do is look at the green check marks. Those are Marshall seniors who were accepted. And also the red X's were Marshall seniors who were denied. And the blue circles were waitlisted or deferred from early action. So what you want to do is try to see is there a point where most of the green is beginning or most of the reds are kind of turning into green as you go from the bottom down here up to the top. 
And down here we can see there's a lot of red down here and that's around 3.0. And as we get up to 3.5, a little bit higher as we go up, we see it becoming more and more green. And it looks to me right around here, around this level, is where more people are being accepted than denied. And so I'm seeing more green around here than red, not as much red anymore. Still a little bit of blue, a little bit of red. But this area, if I go over and look at GPA, is going to be like just maybe just below a 3.5, around a 3.5. So that tells me that a 3.5, maybe a 3.6 is a good target GPA because most people with that and above are being accepted. Uh, most people below a 3.4 are not being accepted. So that kind of tells me that is a, a good sort of a range, you know, something in the 3.4, 3.5 areas where it starts to happen. And then as you get farther up with a 3.6, 3.7, it's definitely the majority being accepted. So GPA and grades are the most important thing in admissions, and that will tell you around the neighborhood uh, for your chances. Now, another, the other important thing is, is what does that GPA mean? Are you taking a lot of IB or, or no IB? So you can hover over a check here, and it won't tell you the student's name, but it will, till, it will tell you the, the number of honors classes. Oh, actually, never mind. I don't have it selected up, up above. But um, what you can do is you can kind of see for, for other schools where there's not as many students, you could kind of see how many honors or classes they have. And you can also change this to ACT if you took that up, up there. The other question to ask is, do, does this particular college care about SAT scores? So to figure out that, we just said, okay, we think around a 3.5 uh, is a good target for GPA. Try to look at that, that target GPA or higher of a 3.5 and then as you go from left to right in this direction, if you see more students getting in than not with a 3.5, maybe it's because of the test scores. That could be one explanation. Uh, if you see down here going from right to left, down here at the lower test scores, if you see very few of them getting in, but with the same GPA that should work, then maybe that also points to test scores as a reason that they're not getting in. So with this, if we if we start around 3.5, I see a lot of people with lower test scores getting in as well as higher test scores. So this doesn't seem to be a college where test scores are a huge factor in admissions. And that's probably true for most colleges, but the colleges that do care about test scores, they're, they're fairly random and unique, so it's not even always the most competitive colleges. You'll just have to look it up kind of one by one and figure it out. So look for trends on these graphs and look to see if higher test scores seem to help at all, uh, or if it doesn't really matter, and if it's all about the grades. So that is the short of it, and how to interpret these graphs. So look for those ranges. Don't pay attention to the one average. If you see an error where it won't display this graph, it will probably say it's hidden for privacy reasons. You can always ask me, because I can look at graphs with all of Fairfax County students, and so we can get plenty of data if there are schools where we don't have too many Marshall students apply. It won't show the graph because you might have heard of the person or know, know them, and you can see whether or not they got in. So don't be afraid to contact me if you need help interpreting these graphs or if you want to find a graph that won't display. So uh, with that, have fun during your research. I will say try to include on your list of colleges uh, schools where you do have a good chance of getting in and don't stack it with too many reaches or uh, too many ones that are super hard to predict because um, you do want to save yourself some good options. So make sure you have some realistic chances on there. And as always, you can contact me if you need help for thinking about ideas of schools that would be good, either just to get into or places that are a good fit for you academically, personally, socially, budget-wise, or others. So good luck in your searching, and talk to you later.